Hey everyone, Sam Mackay here from Enterprise DNA. Just wanted to, to, to do a quick breakout session around, or a breakout session from a recent Enterprise DNA Learning Summit, where I covered some sort of cluster insights in depth. And I wanted to showcase here specifically how I actually uh, created the visualizations, okay? So I've gone through some formula techniques around clustering before. So I definitely definitely look those up inside of um, Enterprise DNA uh, YouTube channel or on the blog. And um, so you'll see some formula techniques here. But what I wanted to show you here was a bit more specific around the the visualization aspect here because I wanted to, um, I guess what, what I wanted to show in this report was clusters over time, so comparisons, right? And so just what we, what we what I've done here is I've tried to highlight I've tried to highlight how um, uh, growth so growth through time so what was the growth from last year to this year for a particular um, for, for particular products okay and so if you if you generally just utilize pretty simple visualization techniques and don't um, add some additional value around clustering in your say scatter plots or, 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 or something like that check out how plain your visualizations can be right so you see how this doesn't um, you know this is just a, a, a just a whole range of different products and doesn't actually showcase us or add any color around what is actually going on there so this is where I feel like you can add a bit of value and so what I did I used this dynamic grouping technique and so I can actually look at clusters I can have a look at my weak customers versus my average customers and my strong customers and I can see okay well and this is growth we're talking about here um, and I can see okay well my sorry this is actually products as well not customers I can see that my strong products um, they they seem to be clustered around with profit margins. My strong growth um, profit margins around the say forty to thirty five percent, and they also have you know sales of on average sort of about five hundred thousand. My weak customers during this particular time frame, they are obviously all more to the left hand side here, but they have a very wide and diverse range of profit margins. So far more interesting type. Of, um, so so much more insightful, right? So it's something that you can sort of talk to, um, you know, if you're in a meeting or or or, or you know, engaging um, with your stakeholders on this sort of stuff. But what I've also done here is I've used a few visualization tricks. Okay, so what I've done is I said, okay, well, what I what I want to do is I want to look in this visualization here. I want to look at one time frame, but I want to see how things change up in a different time frame. Okay, and so. Um, all I have to do is I have, I've got the selections all made up and I can quickly select around here and I've got I'm able to individually see how this how this changes right for per year now what I've done here is I've strategically utilized edit interactions up here okay and so what I've done is I've said I don't want to actually I don't want this particular filter here to change anything down in this visualization or in this visualization, or in this visualization, or here. And the same can be said for this filter that we can use here. And I've done exactly the same thing for here. I've said, for this visualization, I don't, or for this um, slicer, I don't want to be able to change anything else in the report. And so what that enables me to do is that I, I, I don't even need to create new formulas or anything. I can use exactly the same formulas. So the formulas are exactly the same between this visualization and this visualization but by using that smart visualization uh, trick with edit interactions I can now compare these things over time and so say for instance I want to see okay 2016 I only want to see my weak customers in 2016 and I want to see how they performed against my weak customers in 2017 and now I can see a stronger um, you know correlation or non-correlation between these um, two particular um, groupings in my in my product sales and you've got to remember here that none of these groupings actually exist in our raw data they are all generated by a custom supporting table so you see down here down the bottom here a custom supporting table that I've created with some with some min and max bounds to, um, made to it so if I just come into here so you see here that to calculate growth say product growth in this particular um, in this particular case, or to group our products based on growth, I've created these arbitrary groups where I said, okay, weak growth is basically no growth at all, so zero to minus one, um, one, 100, 
arbitrary number. Average growth is 0 to 0 0.03, uh, 0.3, and strong is 30% or more. Okay, and so with that uh, simple grouping, I, I can then see in 2016, year on year, these are my strong, these are, these are my, my products that grew by over 30% in 2016 and grew by over 20% and uh, over 30% in 2017. And so what we can also do if we wanted to add more color here is we can come into here and we can actually um, add data labels as well. So if we wanted to be able to see which which were the products and how they changed, we could do we could do that also. I haven't done that in this case because I've got a little bit more products and it doesn't look as good, but that's that's another example that you can um, that you can use as well. What I've also done here is I've I've created to add even more color. What I've done, as I said, I want to see all of my products right across all of my years, and I want to see what group they actually were in. So, for example, I wanted to see okay, say so product seventy two. In 2015, they were uh, they were strong. In 2016, they were weak. 2017, they were uh, average. In 2018, they were strong. And so, being able to see this movement through time of our products from a um, grouping perspective is also really, really, really good idea as well. I really like this. And I guess one of the other thing I'm trying to um, suggest here is this is such a reusable technique as well. I've created these groups just on growth, but you can create groups on it's just sales or you can create group or uh, groups on profits or profit margins you can create groups on anything this is just how i've created these these group the, the, this grouping just because i thought well this would add um that this would be a really interesting insight for the data that i was working with okay and um i just want to show you how i generated this one here because you know this 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 dashboard here this reporting dashboard here in terms of um the output i feel it gives you in terms of insight is so significant but it's really actually only two formulas there, there's slightly more um, advanced formulas this is just sort of like a dynamic grouping formula but this particular one here this is the formula that I used for this matrix insight which just adds so much value right so all I'm trying to do is I'm trying to say okay go and work out go and work out for every single product what the growth group is and to work that out, we're going to change the context within Calculate. We're going to iterate through every single row in that product grouping table, that one I just showed you. I'm going to work out, is the year-on-year -year sales growth? So is the year-on-year -year sales growth here, is it greater than a min? And is it less than or equal to a max? Every single uh, product is going to, only one of these rows in this table are going to evaluate to true. And when it does, that's when we're going to return the actual group that that particular product is in any particular year and then all the other filtering gets done for us in terms of the matrix so we've got a product context here we've also got our year context up up the top here and that's what generates the difference in growth group for every single year because the year on year sales growth changes for every single year and this, so this gets redone at every single year for every single product okay so just wanted to highlight two really good things here uh, which was which was a uh, this was a very short breakout from our much detailed learning summit session that went for about sort of 50 minutes or so um, but just wanted to highlight the visualization things there and how by utilizing a few of these tips and tricks inside of power bi you can actually you know really generate a huge amount of insight in just one reporting page okay definitely throw the video a like if you enjoyed uh, learning about this one i love this technique um, so hope, hopefully you do too and can find a way to use it. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to Enterprise DNA TV. Okay, take care.